we need to understand where we are in the uh, in the food pyramid basically our humans um, we need to look at our roots uh, we need to look at our legacy <laughs> as uh, and to our in our history evolutionary history and we'll need to look basically to the structure of our gut to the structure of gastrointestinal tract that shows basically the uh, there's a uh, that the normal pH, a lot of science, newer science, and old, also older science, show that the, the, the pH of the human stomach is somewhere around one and a half, which is very low, is very acidic, is very acidic. It's basically just as acidic, very cl close to cats and dogs. Cats are real full uh, carnivores. And the dogs are also carnivores, but they can, uh, as humans, they can also occasionally uh, be, um, I mean, they are omnivores, but only by, ch by chance, mm -hmm. okay? Um, if we want to work with cancer, that's my, my first uh, tri trial. I mean, I tried uh, to reverse cancer in dogs and um, I have five dogs where I reverse different kinds of cancer. And then the, that's the easiest thing to do because what we do, we make a transition to full uh, animal food. We, we take all other foods and in the dogs, it's very, very easy to ensure compliance. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> because you see, they don't, uh, I mean, they, they don't have other choice. We are absolutely defining their lifestyle, okay? And I also, I can tell you afterwards, if you're interested, I made a, a little device for the dogs, uh, from Buteco device for the dogs, basically, because where we simulate uh, the conditions in the den, in, inside of the, um, where the, the dogs can um, tolerate carbon dioxide levels up to 15. 15%. 20, I think. Even up to you 20. Even 20. Uh, okay, okay. I think so, I read up to 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, but that's totally known that actually we can survive uh, CO2 concentrations, which for humans I would be lethal, even if it's my, my much hum, lower. For level. human, I think it's about 8, right? I don't know, 7.58, yeah. So, yes, and it's. Um, um, it's angiosarcomas, for example, they are very often in dogs. That's the, uh, the tumors of the, of the, of the heart. Um, and um, well, it takes uh, from two to four months to fully reverse, to, re all, to remove all the metastases from a dog. Um, and uh, I tried it as, as you know, several times with different breeds of dog, different places in the world. People consulted me and uh, we saw fantastic scans and fantastic stories. So, um, so we are very alike, you know, right now, uh, my dog, basically I can show you, he's uh, lying here. Um, this, his name is Teddy, and uh, he was my first <laughs> client. We reversed chronic inflammation. We, um, he had to be operated. He had um, inflammation in his joints, already in the age of one, uh, one year old. And he was eating like very expensive food that it was made from uh, salmon in Denmark here. So oh. I understand. But together yeah. with additives, of course, yeah? That was with the course everything. Of the I mean, there's a salmon. I, I found it was only 5 to 10% salmon in this. So, and so I removed everything. You know, um, three months and the, all the inflammation in his joints were, were gone. Were gone. And uh, he's, a, he's a seven and a half years old and he never had any health problems. Never, ever. Okay. So what I see that we need to look at our evolutionary past. And when we find out about the pH of the stomach, about the value, or I mean, then we understand why we have a, a pretty short intestines. Large intestines are short, related to omnivores, very short. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then we have pretty large um, um, uh, sh uh, how do you call it? Small, uh, short, small, small intestine. Small. Yeah, pretty uh, powerful small intestine. Almost six yeah. meters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we understand that people can survive without large intestine. Why can we survive without large intestine? Wow, then we start really understanding the power of this knowledge of our evolutionary history. Then we start understanding 
the things. And then there's an interesting, uh, basically microbiota biota of, um, um, of a small intestine in microbiota uh, and in the large intestine, they have different values. I mean, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, it could be a very, very crucial for if we are, and if we need to digest, uh, uh, to ingest fats and in the right manner from uh, small intestines and things like that, then, so we have to reevaluate a lot. And, and I think during the next years, uh, next decade, we will, we will need to reevaluate many of the things that we thought were 100% true about human physiology. 